All right, we're going to spend a little time today talking about some of my experiences as far as what does it cost to operate this Mustang Mach-E GT? How does it compare to traditional vehicles in miles per gallon? What's the miles per gallon equivalent? What am I paying for a kilowatt hour of electricity? What's the national average? Some of my experience costs. Now there's gonna be a lot of variables here. I think it'll be easier just to talk about it as we get there. So stick with me. I will try to make this make sense. Okay, so to get things started, in the United States, the national electrical rate average is 12 cents per kilowatt hour in US dollars. That rate changes quite a bit. How can you find out what your rate is? Well, of course, contact your utility or maybe easier yet, look at your utility bill. Many utilities offer a structured pricing. So for example, like your first 400 kilowatt hours, um, you know, might be really cheap. Like it could be like six cents, eight cents per kilowatt hour. And then your uh, 501 to 1000 kilowatt hours is going to be a different rate. And then like 1000 kilowatt hours or more, um, you know, could be a different rate yet. It might be, uh, you know, 12 cents, could be 14 cents, could be a lot higher depending on where you live. Uh, sorry to my, my viewers in Alaska and Hawaii who are probably paying some astronomical rates. If, if you're there, sound off in the comments and let us know what your utility rate is. Um, I guess yet another variable, a lot of utilities are offering some EV incentives. Uh, so if you're willing to put in a, a separate meter and can have metered service, um, or if you're willing to have off-peak where they can shut you off, or maybe you're only allowed to charge from like... Um, you know, it could be like 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. If you're willing to charge during those off-peak hours, you can get a substantially discounted rate, sometimes as low as like three cents to maybe five cents per kilowatt hour. And that's significant. That's a significant savings. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to go out there and plug your vehicle in at, you know, nine, 10 o'clock at night. These smart chargers that you can get at home, you can just set them up on a schedule. So you get home from work, you plug your vehicle in, it will not start charging until you have that timer set. So basically when you could just set that so you know when your utilities lower rates come on. That's going to be important anyways uh, to summarize. It's going to be important for you to know what your kilowatt hour rate is to make sure that this is going to make sense for you. But for purposes of the video, I'm just going to use that 12 cents since that is the average. That's going to keep everything pretty simple. So the, the GT battery bank size, what do you get? Well, you've got 88 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, 91 kilowatt hours total. So anytime you have a battery, you never are going to get that 100% full capacity out of it. There's always a small margin in there that's going to be sort of set as a reserve or the battery just simply can't fill up that full. So in the case of this, in the GT, or if you have uh, the extended pack size, uh, yes, the total capacity is 91 kilowatt hours, but 88 of that is usable. As far as estimated range goes, so the EPA uh, combined rate is 270 miles. Uh, the highway rate is 247. So if you're at highway speeds, these aren't getting quite as good, which is kind of the opposite of gasoline. Um, so just so you know, if you haven't seen that, 270 miles uh, combined, 247 highway. And, and remember, these are in ideal driving conditions, not winter, like we're going to talk about here in a moment. So what am I actually doing? So my actual range is, is this is all going to be related to winter driving. I've had this vehicle, it's been at least late fall, so it's been cool. And then of course, now we're at the very end of December, it's cold. All right, so I'm averaging about two miles per kilowatt hour. And I say that with a big average and about because it's just, it is what it is. Um, 17 to 23% of that capacity roughly is used for climate control. So as I've said in other videos, use a heated parking stall whenever you can. If, you, if you're fortunate and you have a garage, if you're in an apartment and you have heated parking, that's going to be such a big thing because if if you can get into that cabin and it's just already warm with ambient air and you're not doing anything um, else to you know use the battery, that's that's huge. Uh, if you're outside, 
preheating the vehicle while plugged in. Notice I say while plugged in. Make sure that you're plugged in while doing this, if you can. It makes the most sense to pull that power from the grid. So if you're plugged in, the battery or the your car is going to go from charging uh, to now charging just a little bit, but using that utility grid power to also run your 5kW heater that's in the car. So if you can have that running off of the grid versus taking from your battery bank, you're going to extend your range as well. I'll always use the seat and steering wheel heaters. Um, that's just, it's such a big thing. I, I've talked about it in an un, another video, but if you can keep your hands warm and your body's warm, generally you can lower your cabin temperature a couple degrees. And I say for, for road trips, I'll probably get some flack for this. Um, consider an extra layer of clothing. Uh, I don't like to drive with a jacket on if I'm, if I'm on a road trip, but I will throw a sweatshirt on. Like I'm okay with that. Uh, if you can keep your body a little bit warmer, again, maybe you can put that cabin temp down from like 72 down to 70. A couple degrees is going to make a difference over a road trip. Now, again, I'm not talking daily driving. This is just for, for, some, for, for your road trips. And this is, again, all of this, this is during my 1,300 miles that I've had the vehicle so far. All right, getting into some numbers here. Bear with me. Cost to charge, cost per mile. So we're using that, sorry, we're using the average electrical rate of 12 cents US dollars per kilowatt hour. All right, that's 12 cents from the grid. So we're going to use the total battery capacity from using that 91 kilowatt hour. I understand that's not the usable, but just to try to keep things uh, in check here, we're going we're gonna to go with that. So if I take that 12 cents that I'm paying from the utility times 91 kilowatt hours, I get $10.92 per full charge. All right, so that's filling the battery completely up. It's going to cost me, if my utility rate is 12 cents, $10.92. So with that said, my current average is about 2.0 miles per kilowatt hour. If I times that by 91 kilowatt hours, I get 182 miles experienced range in the winter. So if I take that $10.92, divide it by 182, I get six cents per mile. That's six pennies per mile. Again, lots and lots of variables here. Charging temp, power factor. If, if, you're, if you've got some dirty power uh, and you're not getting a, a good power factor, uh, that could come into play. Regenerative braking. Uh, exterior temperature, what, what's the temperature outside? There's many, many variables here. So just keep in mind, I'm just giving you some averages, okay? These are just averages, some numbers to go off of. So the mile per gallon equivalent, you'll see the MPGE versus gasoline. My current experience, I'm getting 182 miles as we just covered, and that costs $10.92 with the current average utility rates. The about average of gasoline in the U.S. today at the end of December is roughly $3.12. Again, here, huge variables from one end of the coast to the other. But for the numbers, just bear with me, $3.12 times 3.5 gallons is $10.92. So notice we're at our $10.92 equivalent for gasoline, and we're going to compare that to our electrical cost. So the national gas average mile per gallon is about... 25 mpg so think of your vehicle what do, what's your vehicle your gas vehicle mpg we're just going to use the, the national average at 25 so if we take that 25 times 3.5 gallons that gets us 87.5 miles again many variables here so for that same ten dollars and 92 cents on a gas vehicle average i could go 87.5 miles or, in my case, for $10.92, I'm getting about 182 miles of range. So, as you can see, there's some significant savings here. And if you can get your utility rate, think if you do get some of that off-peak charging, or you have a dedicated EV charger, if your utility gives you that, you can probably cut that cost in half. So just enter in your own numbers there and you can see where those savings are. Um, it's, it's significant. Uh, so in summary, there's some significant savings. Uh, I would encourage you first, know what your utility cost is. 
call them, look at your bill. It's going to tell you on there what your kilowatt hour rate is. If you have a variable rate, I would always take that high rate because you're going to be charging at home. It's going to probably bump you up into whatever your top tier is if you have tiered pricing. So just use that high rate. Uh, call the utility, ask them about EV incentives, EV chargers. Remember, I used in these examples 12 cents per kilowatt hour. If you can get down and cut that in half to six cents or le or maybe even less, those uh, that ten dollars and ninety two cents is going to be cut in half. I mean, there's some uh, significant savings there. So, if you found this helpful, let me know in the comments. Um, please give the video a like. Consider subscribing. It really does help the channel. I'm trying to put the effort in here, giving you guys some content that maybe you'll find useful. If you have any questions, let me know. I promise I look at the comments. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe in the new year, and I look forward to bringing you many more videos. Take care.